everyone. Welcome back to summer reading program at the library. Today we're going to be doing some awesome painting with glaze and paint. But first, I want to remind you what we have coming up. So summer reading program is starting to come to a close, but we're going to have the prize reveal on August 19th. So remember that date, you're going to see if you're a big winner in the raffles. And in August, we are going to be having a teen bee garden take and make kit. So if you love bees and honey and pollinators, you can pick one up starting August 17th. And then we'll have our live stream gardening tips for pollinators on August 24th, a Monday again at 1 p.m. All right. Now, Katie, you can take it away and do some slot painting. Awesome. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Katie from Glaze and Paint. If you don't know where that is, we're on Washington Street. We're at 909 Washington Street here in Manitowoc. So right now we are open to the public. We're open Wednesday through Saturday. You can either come on into paint or we can even pack up a comb kit, kind of like what we're doing here with the library, so you can paint at home. So today we are going to be making our sloth painting here. So if you stopped in to get a kit, your kit should include a canvas this size. So I'm going to be doing our example on this size of a canvas, but yours will be a little smaller at this size. It should also have paint in these little cups here. A couple different sizes of brushes. And then there should be a printed off sheet of step-by-step -step instructions as well. So if you get lost at any point, or if you wanna go back and look, review the steps, they're all be on this handout here. And if you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments as well. So first things first, I recommend putting either a tablecloth or some newspaper down just so it doesn't get on anything. And I also recommend wearing paint clothes because this paint may stain your clothes. This is acrylic paint, so it might not wash out as easily as other paints. You will also need to find just a cup of water for rinsing out your brushes and some paper towel for drying your brushes. So remember that at any time, I'm going to be showing you step-by-step step how to make this exact painting here, but at any time, feel free to do your own thing as well. So this is your painting and you can do whatever you would like with it. You can always add your own little flares and personal touches as well. I also do have a hair dryer set up. I will be drying my painting at a couple different steps. Now you can use a hair dryer if you would like to speed up drying. Otherwise you can just let it air dry too. Completely up to you. First things first, we're gonna take the largest brush you have and the teal blue paint. And we're going to cover the entire canvas, including the edges in this blue paint. So you'll, only need a really thin layer. Doesn't need to be very thick or anything. You just want to go back and forth, cover the entire canvas. And as I said before, you can do the edges as well. Usually I like to paint the edges if you're going to be hanging it on your wall or anything like that. That way it makes it look a little bit more finished. But you don't have to if you don't want to, because it's your painting. I always like to have my brush strokes always going in the same direction. You should have plenty of paint in your kit for each of these steps. So there should be no running out of paint too. But if you do have any acrylic paint at home or anything, you can always use that if you want to add other colors or anything to your painting as well. So we're just going to take our time here. Almost done with my background.
So I want to make sure to smooth out any big lumps of paint just so they can dry evenly. So I have my entire background covered. So I'm going to dry this with a hair dryer. But again, if you don't want to, you can just let it air dry too. This paint does dry pretty fast on its own as well. But I'm going to just dry this quick here. Okay, so I have my background. Now I did get some on my hands and that's okay. This will wash out of your skin, but it may not wash out of clothes. So just be a little careful with your clothes. So, from any of the other steps on, you can use whichever brush you're more comfortable with. Completely up to you, whatever size you want to use. Um, if you are using the same brush as a different color, you just have to rinse it out in the water and just make sure it's really dry before you go into the next color. But completely up to you. So I'm going to use kind of a larger brush. The next step we're going to do is we're going to make this tree here. So we're going to get the brown paint. And these paints will stay good as long as they're covered. So you don't have to worry about them drying out or anything if you're not painting right away. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a diagonal line. So we're going to start in the upper corner here. Just make one line to start with. Going down the canvas. So once I have my line there, we're just going to make it a little thicker. And all trees are different. So you can do whatever you would like. and Make your tree look however you want it to look. on this side here for a minute. Sometimes it'll take a couple layers of paint to get a really nice thick color. So you can always go over it again if you would like a brighter color and to not see your brush strokes. So this is the trunk of our tree first. So once we have that main trunk or a larger branch, I should say, we're going to do littler branches coming off of it. So just keep in mind, our sloth is going to be somewhere right in here. So you don't want to put any branches going where the sloth is going to be. So instead, I'm going to have a branch just coming up here. You just want it at an angle coming off of the main branch. And you can add as many of these as you want. But again, keep in mind where your sloth is going to be, because you're not going to want to put any where the sloth will be hanging from the tree. Okay, I think I'll put one more little branch coming off of this one here. But again, add as many as you would like. If you want a bunch or if you want just a few, completely up to you. Okay. 
Okay. So now that we have that step done, I'm going to use the same brush. So I'm going to rinse it out in the water. Just rinse that out and make sure it's dried really, really good. Next, we're going to start our sloth. So we're going to need the gray paint. And what we're going to do first is about an inch away from your tree, we're going to start by making an oval. And this is going to be for the sloth's body. And I always like to start smaller because you can always make it bigger. You can start small, you can always make it bigger. And then you fill in that oval. So that's going to be the sloth's body. And then on top of that is going to be a circle. And we're going to fill that in as well. That's the sloth's head. There we go. And then coming off of this oval here, we're going to put four arms and legs. So I'm going to have one arm hanging onto the branch. So it comes off of the oval and goes right up to the branch there. And then two legs coming off of down here again coming off of the oval, going up to the branch there. And I'm going to have one arm kind of hanging down. So instead of going up to the branch, I'm just going to have it going downwards. So I'm not going to use this brush next, so I'm going to just leave that in the water. Going to come around on this side here. So while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, I'm going to do the leaves on my tree. So I'm going to use the smaller of the brushes, but again, you can use whichever one you are most comfortable with. So I'm going to use the green paint in my small brush, and then I'm just going to do little tiny raindrop shapes for my leaves. You fill those in and you can really put as many of these on as you would like. Just fill up those branches. On here, you can see I put some on my little branches and some on the main branch too. So it's really up to you however many leaves you want to add. They can be going in all different directions. Now seems like a good time to mention too. So over at Glaze and Paint, we not only do canvas painting, but we also have wood pieces and ceramic painting as well. And then if you make any of our ceramics, we do fire them so that they get all nice and glossy and shiny when they are finished. And we can put any of those projects into a to-go kit as well for painting at home, just like how we're doing today. And also, if you didn't get a kit from the library here, but you want to make this painting, you can also come on in. We can get you one of these as well and purchase it from us. I'm going to do a couple more leaves up here. So, Katie. Yes? What do you do if you make a mistake and, uh, you know, you're painting with a dark color, like, the green and it's darker than the teal of the background. Sure. So the nice thing about acrylic paint is that you can let it dry or dry it with a hair dryer, and then you can go right over the top of it again. So even the teal will cover up the green. 
So that's the nice thing about acrylic paint is any colors will cover the other colors. And if you're having a tough time, if it's not covering in one coat, you might just have to do a couple coats. So it definitely can be fixed. No worries. Now, if you have any other questions or anything, feel free to comment on here and we can get them answered for you. Almost done with my leaves here. And add a couple over here. And remember, remember to take your time and have fun. This isn't supposed to be stressful or anything like that. This is your painting. Okay, so I'm done with my leaves. So I'm going to quick dry this with my hair dryer again. I'm mainly drying the sloth so that we can add the next step onto there. So I'll be right back. So now that my sloth is dry, we're going to add the white detailing onto the sloth. So I'm going to use the smallest paintbrush again. I'm going to rinse that brush out and make sure to dry it really, really good. Grab my white paint. I'm going to come on this side here. So the first step is we're going to do the face. So this is going to be like a heart except for the bottom is going to be rounded instead of pointed. Just like that. And then we're going to fill that in with white paint. And feel free if you want to, you can draw this on with a pencil first. That way you could always erase it if you wanted. Or you can just go with the paint right away. It's completely up to you. Just fill that in with the white. Sometimes it might take a couple coats, but as I said before, so you can always do another layer of paint if you want to. So then that's going to let, we're going to let that dry for just a little bit. So next we're going to do the fingernails. So I'm not going to put any on these two arms here because those are like on the other side of the branch. So I'm just going to put it on this one and then the one that's hanging down here. But we want to put three little lines coming off of those arms. One, two, three. And then three on this one here, too. One, two, three. It's a three toed sloth. So we have three on each. And then the last thing we're going to do with the white paint 
is we're just going to add a couple little lines in the fur on the body here. That's just going to give it a little bit of a texture. So you can even add some to the arms and they're just little tiny lines. They're just completely random wherever you would like. It just adds a little bit of texture to your sloth. Like it's furry. You can have it coming down this arm here. And you don't need a lot of paint on your brush for this, just a real little bit. Because we're not covering it in white, we're just adding a little bit of that detailing. We're going to let that dry a little bit before we do any of the detailing in the face. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we can do the writing. So I'm going to rinse that same brush out. I like to use the smallest brush. You could even use a marker if you wanted as well, if you don't want to paint it on. You don't have to use black if you don't want to, but I'm going to use black because I know it stands out on the back of the teal. But if you wanted to use a different color, go right ahead. So I have on mine, don't hurry, be happy, but you can do whatever you would like. And if you don't want words, that's okay too. You don't have to add them. And again, you can pencil this on first too, if you would like to, but you don't have to. I'm going to put half of my words on the top. And you can always put all of them down below too, if you want to completely up to you because it's your painting. You can do this with different colored markers if you wanted to. You can do a couple colors, or you can paint it on like I am here. Be happy here at the bottom. Perfect. So now I'm just going to dry this a little bit with our hair dryer so I can move on to the next step. But again, you can let it air dry if you want to. That works just as well. Especially in this heat, it seems to dry a little faster. Okay, so we're going to use a little bit of the gray next. So I'm going to rinse that brush out again. Grab that gray paint. And we're just going to put two ovals going off that heart. Just like this here. 
So they don't go all the way to the center, but they're just kind of where the eyes are and they go right off the heart there that we made before in white. And then we're going to rinse that brush off one more time. We're going to put the black on that for the eyes, nose, and mouth. So I have my little sloth the eyes are just closed. So they're just like little tiny half moon shapes. And then the nose is just a little oval in between those little gray spots that we made. Little tiny oval. And then the mouth, it's just a little smiling mouth connected to the nose. And if you want your sloth to look a little different, again, completely up to you. This is just how I wanted mine to look. So you can always adjust to however you want yours to look. So that is the last step of how to make this. But then the very last thing you'd have to do would be to either sign it. You can sign it on the front, the bottom, the side, wherever you want. And then you can display this in your home somewhere. Or maybe you can give it as a gift even too. So if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Otherwise, happy painting. So Katie, if they happen to have lost their small brush yeah. or their sloth face got a little smaller than they expected, do you have any tips for how to get that those small details? If you don't want to use the small brush or if you misplaced your small brush or anything like that, you can use the, the marker or usually like a Sharpie even to make those little detailings too. Like how we kind of did, if you didn't want to paint the words, you could use a marker. You could use a marker for that as well. And sometimes that's a little easier than the brush too. So it's completely up to you. Wonderful, thank you. And Katie can always look back on our uh, stream post too to see if you guys have any questions later when you paint this, if you paint this later tonight. Definitely, or you can contact us at the studios page as well on our Facebook page too. All right, well, thank you so, so much, Katie. It's an adorable sloth and we had a ton of fun making this with you. Well, thanks for painting with us.